The divisions within the evangelical fold over President Trump are deepening. In the latest sign of discord, an editor at the Christian Post has quit. Nap Nasworth tweeted he's leaving because the Post, quote, decided to publish an editorial that positions them on Team Trump. He added the Christian Post has, quote, chosen to represent a narrow and shrinking slice of Christianity. The Reverend Tony Suarez is the executive vice president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. He's also a member of the president's evangelical advisory board and one of the nearly 200 evangelical leaders who signed a letter criticizing last week's Christianity Today op-ed and expressing their support for President Trump. Reverend Suarez, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, a lot to talk about. Let's first listen to the editor-in-chief of Christianity Today telling my colleague Brooke Baldwin about why he felt moved to write that op-ed calling for President Trump's removal from office. Take a listen. And a lot of the people who disagree with my editorial are, are good friends who's, who can remain convicted that the balance between uh, the, the things Trump can do for the things we care about, pro-life, religious freedom, and the... Uh, that his questionable moral character, that those things can be weighed in the balance and they can still, in good conscience, vote for the president. For me, the impeachment hearings were that moment when it said to me, the balance argument doesn't work anymore. Mm. I love okay. my brothers and sisters who take that point of view, but I'm trying to say, I don't, think, I don't think it holds water anymore. And it's time for us to think about this whole situation differently. Reverend Suarez, I, I wanna ask you, do you think there's room for criticism of President Trump within the evangelical community? I think there's room for constructive criticism of any person. The issue with Mark's editorial is that it vilified not just the president, but those of us that have supported and have voted for President Trump. All of us have a difference of opinion, uh, but the, the, the steps taken by Christianity Today are unprecedented. And we felt like it was an unfair attack against those of us that have worked together. Mark's right, we're friends. We've sat in rooms together. We've been at conferences together. But he attacked not just the president or a campaign, but a people group that stand behind the president because of what he's done to protect life, religious liberty, and biblical justice. Mm. And so you feel like you were attacked in that, that people that you know were, were, were attacked in that same op-ed? Oh, absolutely. I feel, like, I feel like the Evangelical Advisory Board was attacked, and anyone that has voted for President Trump, uh, he, he, didn't just, he didn't just call out his concerns with the president. He vilified an entire evangelical movement. And for what it's worth, I think that those that agree with Mark Galley are, are in an extreme minority within the evangelical movement. And furthermore, uh, Mark waited until two weeks before his retirement to even write this article. So he, he you know, fires the shot, if you will, and then gets to ride off into the sunset while those of us that remain in the fight, if you will, have to live with the repercussions of such an article. And it doesn't look like Christianity Today is backing down. Their president released another article yesterday, uh, in essence, defending the editorial by Mark. So apparently, right. and very disappointingly, this is, the, this is the stance that I guess the entire magazine is taking. So it's not just the opinion of one man, but it seems like all of Christianity Today, or as yeah. some are calling it Christianity Yesterday, have taken this stance. I, I, I want to kind of understand this, though, because because Christians are called to model their lives after Jesus, his teachings, love, kindness, empathy, act as servant leaders, meaning putting others before themselves. And some people do see evangelical support of the president as hypocritical in that way, that Christians are called and to lead a life one way to hell to one standard. But the president seems to get a pass in some cases. So how do you square those teachings of Christianity with some of President Trump's behavior. We have a respect for the office of the President of the United States. The President of the NHCLC, the organization where I serve as Executive Vice President, has been an advisor for four different presidential administrations. Billy Graham was an advisor to presidential administrations going back, I believe it was all the way to Eisenhower. Um, our role in that position is not it's not a commitment to a man necessarily as it is an office. And so we feel that while there is an opportunity to speak truth, to speak conviction, to be there, to be a moral compass, if you will, we mm -hmm. feel like it's important to be in that room. There have been calls for from certain, you know, certain people or individuals or institutions um, to, to leave the table. 
But how can we be an influence if we're not at the table? There's a biblical story of a man named Zacchaeus who was hated amongst the townspeople, if you will. But Jesus went and visited his house. And a conversation between Jesus and Zacchaeus led to a conversion. Now, I'm in no way saying that we're Jesus or that any entity is Zacchaeus. I, no, I hear you. I hear you. But the, the, the opportunity to come to the table and have conversations can lead to good. And we've done it with other administrations. Why wouldn't we do it with this one? And, and so I guess what I'm what I'm wondering about is in the Christianity Today op-ed, they were they were offering some of that criticism. I, I know that you felt like it was it was an attack, and that some people do see it that way. But but I guess my question is, if you're at the table, when do you use your voice? Then when do you push back? We we push we well we use our voice when we are with the man. I I find no. I find no benefit to attacking the administration via social media. Mm -hmm. And again, the editorial did not just offer constructive criticism, it's calling for his impeachment. Mm -hmm. and, and the question remains, if you impeach the president, I think it was James Dobson who asked the question, if you, if you impeach President Trump, then as evangelicals, what are we asking for? And I know some would say, well, that, you know, Pre uh, Vice President Pence would then step into office, but an impeachment of Donald Trump is impeaching, a, it, it, it's, it's a, it would be an impeachment of, of a complete administration. So uh, those that are calling, those within the conservative evangelical movement, which again, I think are a very small minority that would be calling for his impeachment, have to answer the question, then what are they asking for? If we stand behind candidates that are pro-life right. and religiously liberty, who, who then comes to the table if we impeach the man that at this point has done more for our values than any other president that we have in modern history? All right, Reverend Tony Suarez, I've got to leave it there. I really do appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me.